Welcome everyone to today's webinar. This is the fourth in our series, Transparency is the New Green, where we feature building product manufacturers who are making higher performing, greener products. And you can find them in our transparency catalog. What we're hoping to share with you today is the stories from Valspar and Inpro about how they're working to understand the environmental impacts of their products, the material ingredients that they put in their products, and to continue to improve those products and share the information about what's in those products, both through technical disclosures that they've created to help AECs earn credits in the green building rating systems, but also to help inform people who are specifying products about the environmental impact and material ingredients of their products so that people can make better informed purchase and specification decisions. And so here at Sustainable Minds, what we're working to do is move from purely disclosure to taking that disclosure and turning it into brand value for manufacturers by integrating product transparency into product marketing. So the entire story about the manufacturer's products is all in one place in one integrated way. So today we have with us Teresa McGrath from Valspar and now Sherwin Williams and Amanda Getch from Inpro who have really fantastic stories to share with you and to set the context for their product stories. I'm going to take you through a little bit about what we're trying to do uh, with our transparency products and the transparency catalog and then their stories will uh, kind of fit in that context and we'll wrap up with uh, Q&A both uh, amongst ourselves as well as uh, certainly questions from the audience. Probably most of you have been on webinars before. We'll keep our eye on the questions in the chat panel and if we can answer them in the context uh, of the Q&A, we will. And otherwise, we will get back to you. This webinar is being recorded and it will be posted. And you can also request a copy of the deck if you're interested. All of this is freely available. So to set the kind of big context, uh, manufacturers face two key challenges. Uh, they want and need, they want both, to credibly design greener products, so, so make them well in the, in the first place. And then if they're doing that, they should be able to market them in a credible way as well. And it's all the same drivers that drive both the demand for making greener products and then marketing them better. And brand is kind of at the center of it. Uh, when a manufacturer can really make and market greener products, that's what positions them as a credibly greener brand and drives uh, preference and value uh, for, for that brand. So we believe that product transparency builds credibly greener brands, but not by just producing disclosures that the value for manufacturers to provide this environmental information about their products comes from demonstrating they understand what it means and they actually know what they're doing. Because making greener product decisions requires consistent, understandable, and meaningful information. And when that's delivered, you're gonna get the truth, truth builds trust, trust builds powerful brands and powerful brands create preference and value for their companies. So today, with the demand for product transparency, there still are a lot of challenges that all the participants are experiencing. The architects, engineers, and contractors who are trying to find and specify products that are higher performing and have those disclosures to earn the credits in the green building rating systems 
uh, can't really easily find all those products either on the manufacturer's website or in the rating systems site, program operators, other aggregators. They're kind of everywhere. Uh, and even when they do find them, it's really not that easy to make a decision about which one is better or which one really uh, suits the needs of the project they're specifying for. For manufacturers, uh, for those who have started early, uh, creating disclosures, maintaining that early mover advantage is a challenge. And we're really now into uh, early mainstream. We're, we're out of uh, early adoption. Those manufacturers who got started and wanted to move the market and do what the AECs were asking for are really still challenged with how do we leverage those investments into sales. Uh, and now that these disclosures exist, they're made by the technical people, but it's the market facing, the customer facing people who have to distribute them, explain them, uh, help uh, customers understand them and find them, and really be able to tell an integrated story about what the manufacturer uh, it believes in, is committed to, and how they're building a greener and healthier brand. And further, when people do research for products, most often they will go to a manufacturer's website to find products first. So while it's all well and good uh, to have a catalog or multiple places where products are, are aggregated, the customer experience is often delivered first at the manufacturer's website. So Sustainable Minds is solving, uh, is working to solve that entire range uh, of challenges by building an educational marketing platform and not just a product database. The key things about the transparency catalog is that education is permanently built in. Is everybody in this story needs more education. AECs need more education about what does product transparency mean? How is it being used by the manufacturers? How do you use these disclosures to map to rating systems? And everyone in the manufacturer's organization needs education too about the identical things so that people can finally be kind of speaking the same language. Now the product data landscape is expanding. Uh, we're one of the providers, and really what we're trying to do, and this webinar is one of the pieces of our educational marketing platform, is to solve the challenges of findability, understandability, and to create meaning. Because if we do all that, we're going to get the change that we want in the market, that everyone will actually prefer the brands and their products that they understand how they're higher performing and greener and healthier. And the benefit for the manufacturers is we're creating a, a toolkit and a platform that is specifically designed to save time and money, improve effectiveness, <clears throat> and actually be able to deliver an ROI on the product transparency investments. And if everyone is satisfied on both sides, AECs and manufacturers, we are actually going to create that change uh, that everybody is, is looking for. So the catalog is designed to support three very simple use cases. Find all products from a brand. And that's the version of the catalog as it is today. Uh, in a few months, we'll be adding filtering capabilities, which you would typically expect in a product database. We haven't added that yet because we specifically want to have the focus on all the brands who have stepped up to start with product transparency. Now today, the two brands that you're going to meet and, and the point uh, I love about having uh, different kinds of manufacturers kind of in different stages of their transparency journey 
uh, is all of these manufacturers who have gotten started are the ones that should be rewarded. Whether they've just gotten started or they got started a long time ago, these are the manufacturers that are making the effort to improve their products and tell their stories. And the listings are designed to be able to do that. Uh, you'll see uh, when Amanda tells her story, you'll be able to go to the Impro listing and find over 100 products all in one place uh, that you'll be able to find the information in their website as well as the technical disclosures all in one place. And you'll see when Teresa tells her story, they have invested in one of our transparency products, our material health overview, which is why they're a featured brand because they have uh, created an abundance of content to explain what they're doing, what the disclosures mean, how they're making improvements, the values in the rating systems, and who better to tell that story than Teresa, who is an environmental regulatory toxicologist with Valspar and now Sherwin-Williams. And I'm going to turn it over to Teresa for her to continue and to tell her story. All right. Thank you, Terry. Um, and thank you all for joining us. Um, like Terry said, I'm a... Um, toxicologist for uh, Sharon Williams, and I'm just going to give you a brief background on me um, so you know who's, who's talking to you here. Um, my uh, degree is in clean chemical technology, um, and I got that at the University of York um, in England. And right after graduating, I started my career with the US EPA in their um, design for the environment team. Um, that program is now called Safer Choice, um, but uh, when it was when I started, we were still doing the um, product uh, evaluations for formulating companies, trying to help them choose safer ingredients for their products and identify safer alternatives for their products. Um, and I also supported the green chemistry program with the US EPA. Um, from there, I moved to uh, a not-for-profit called NSF International. It's a standards and certifications um, organization based in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, and there, I led a team of toxicologists in our green chemistry programs. And we um, supported the US EPA's Design for the Environment, now Safer Choice program. Um, but we also supported uh, sustainable product certifications, um, many of which were in the built environment. Um, and then about two years ago, two and a half years ago now, I moved to Valspar, um, paints and coatings company based in Minneapolis. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about my role in a, in a slide or two there, but um, about a year ago, or a year ago, uh, it was announced that we were being bought by Sherwin Williams, and that, that deal closed um, about a month ago. So now we are part of the Sherwin Williams team. And as part of that team, um, we are the largest, um, the, the combined companies are now the largest um, coatings manufacturer in the, um, in the world. Um, we have uh, the combined companies will be uh, about $16 billion in annual sales um, and about 60,000 uh, employees. Um, the headquarters will still be in, um, will be in Cleveland, Ohio, but we're keeping our Minneapolis campus and that's where, where I am based. Um, in fact, our, our headquarters of industrial um, coatings will be here in Minneapolis as well. Uh, next slide. Thank you. My um, my role at um, Sherwin Williams. My my job actually when I was hired for Valspar was a brand new role. Um, they realized they needed um, they needed some help navigating the sustainable product, um, green building, um, transparency space. Um, so I was hired to help um, help with that. My role um, includes many things, but it includes chemicals management, so identifying 
globally for our entire portfolio of chemicals that we want to phase out of and identifying safer alternatives to replace those chemicals with. Um, we have, um, I, I manage developing our policies for responding to um, materials disclosure requests, and we're going to show you a couple of examples of that um, in this presentation. Um, I perform hazard assessments, um, including green screens and alternative assessment to help support our research and development team when they're both developing brand new chemistry um, or just swip, swap, swapping out a chemical for another chemical and, and want to know um, more about the hazard profile of those alternatives. A small part of my job is um, managing policies for responding to eco-label requests. Um, and training staff on how to respond to those requests. Um, but then a larger part of my job is, is advocacy. Um, and um, I perform a lot of internal and external um, training and education, both on transparency programs, green building programs, eco-label programs, um, educating our customers um, how they can best meet their needs um, and how we can best meet, meet their needs. Um, I represent uh, now Sean Williams on um, technical advisory committees of these various programs. Um, I do that for a couple of reasons, both to keep myself educated on what, um, what's going on and the changing landscape in these programs, but also to help, um, to help those programs best achieve their goals, um, giving them the industry perspective and the, what, what is technically possible from the industry perspective. Um, so I, I help um, um, on the various committees, I listed just a few, a few there that are relevant to this uh, topic. Um, the products uh, that I'll be talking to you about today are called coil and extrusion, but um, Valspar, <clears throat> or I'm sorry, Sharon Williams, I'm still getting used to it. Um, Sharon Williams is um, very diverse. So largest paints and coatings company in the world, and we make coatings from anywhere from consumer paints and stains. Um, we do automotive coatings, uh, furniture coatings, appliance coatings, packaging for um, uh, beverage and food. Um, but today I'm just going to be focusing on these uh, narrow set of products and that, I, that are called coil and extrusion. Um, coil and extrusion products are painted metal products. The biggest difference between the two is that coil is pre-painted and then the, the building manufacturer shapes uh, that pre-painted metal into its final building product form, whereas the extrusion the metal is preformed and then painted. Um, that's the, the only difference. The chemistry of the coatings are very similar. Um, coil products are used on roofing, um, big flat sheets of metal, so roofing, siding, um, gutters, that kind of thing. Whereas extrusion products are on window panels and sunshades. Um, and um, we, you can also find those products on interior um, appliances and HVAC. Um, but um, but because it's because um, these products are often used on um, building products. Um, can you advance the slide one? Thank you. Um, we decided to create a transparency um, document on this, this type of product. We noted that um, the green building space. It has a growing set of drivers, um, many of which require um, materials disclosure, or at least reward project teams who use materials disclosure. And so we were getting um, a huge num uh, increase in the number of requests for transparency. And we listened to our customers' demand, and we decided to um, create a tr transparency document. Next slide. Um, and we as a company, we're able to respond to our customers' demand for materials transparency because we uniquely have the expertise to do so. I, I know that if I was in a room with all of you and I asked you to raise your hands as to when, you know, you asked one of your suppliers if you've 
if uh, for a material transparency document for disclosure and you were either told um, no or we don't know or even worse you've been provided with something uh, a disclosure that's clearly incorrect um, I know you would all be raising your hands. I'm sitting here raising my hand too. Um, but um, and I get it. It's it's hard. It's not easy. Um, but we um, at Sherwin are able to meet these requests because we understand the requests. We have the best chemists in the industry who understand the chemistry. They understand that a coating, the wet formulation, is not the same um, and as the, the dried formulation that's on the, the product. Um, and they understand how that chemistry changes during that baking and curing process. We also own a bunch of our own supply chain, which we're, we're lucky to do. Um, we, we have our own resin in-house resin manufacturer, our colorant manufacturer is in-house, so we don't have the same struggles with getting those external suppliers uh, to, um, to so that we understand what's in our coding. Um, we also listen to our customers' needs very closely. Um, so we understand that each customer has a, a different set of goals and requirements, um, and so we try to build our um, responses and our uh, to those requests to help specifically meet their needs. Um, we also know the green re building rating system very well. Um, so when those requests come in, we can help um, the architect or the product manufacturer get the information that they need um, to, to fulfill that request. And so all these kind of stars aligned, and and we were able to become the first coil and extrusion uh, coatings manufacturer in the world to publicly disclose uh, ingredients on our products. Next slide. The product we chose uh, to showcase and are showcasing in the Sustainable Mind site is our Floor Pond Pure product, and this was developed to be a high performance coating. Um, that's compliant with uh, the Lo Living Building Challenge Red List requirements. Um, and as such, our primer um, is hexavalent chromium free. Usually these primers for metal coatings um, contain hexavalent chromium. And we developed a primer 10 years ago that can be not only hexavalent chromium free itself, but it can be used on hexavalent free chromium pretreatment, uh, which is a uh, more technical than I'll get into today, but a very big feat uh, from a technical perspective um, and something we're really proud of. Um, and because we did it 10 years ago, we have 10 years worth of real uh, test data to show that this product will be a high performance product. It meets all of our standard requirements um, and so that we can support our standard warranty position on that product. Um, in addition, the top coats and backers are free of phthalates uh, PSOA and, and lead and all the other red list um, uh, li living building challenge red list uh, chemicals. Next slide, please. We generated a declare label and an HPD um, for fluoropine pure, um, and we did both to create a clear path for our customers, especially the declare label, um, to create a clear path for our customers to generate their own red list free declare labels. Because our product, our product's not sold directly to um, a building project. It's sold to a building product manufacturer. So we're in that unique space of being in the supplier, a supplier to the building product industry, um, not directly to the building industry. Um, and um, and so we needed to, to create something that will help our customers um, meet those transparency requests so that the building manufacturers can get those points within either living building challenge or within the lead version for materials disclosure requirement. Um, and and um, we also did this because architects can directly specify our product and so we wanted to show them that we can we can do this and we know what we're what's in our product um, and they can see what's in our product um, and make an informed decision based on that okay so here I get to show you guys what's um, 
within our Sustainable Minds listing. So we worked with Sustainable Minds to generate uh, a materials health overview. Um, and we did this to help um, to help tell our story to customers um, and to architects. So they can, at a glance, um, look through this document and see what um, what certifications and standards we comply with. Um, they can read uh, more about our product and see the results from the DECLARE label and the HPD at a quick glance. Um, we chose to do both the HPD and the DECLARE label on this product because different customers needed different things from us and we're going after um, um, different project goals. Um, DECLARE is obviously well suited for the living building challenge and someone going after that. But um, if someone was working on a, you know, a Google project or a lead V4 project, the HPD might be a better tool for them. So we created both to give those options. You can read more about how the product is made um, and more about how we're continuously improving our product um, and our entire line of coil and extrusion products and the, the, the interesting um, goals we're working on. And at the very bottom, you can see as glance, and I really like this part of it, um, quickly what specific credits our products can help earn within all the various green building rating systems at the bottom, yeah. Um, there you go. Um, and so you can see it's a really easy way to see you can get high reflectance roof, um, you can, um, you can earn the red list for free. You can meet the transparency requirements both in lead and well building. Um, so uh, I feel like this is this is what um, architects and, and project teams are looking for, a, a quick answer to their questions so that they can specify the right product. So we really like that about the, the materials health overview. All right, if we're going back to the, to the deck. And next slide, actually two more slides forward. Yeah, next, there we go. Um, so I included one slide on how to specify for floor if I'm pure. Like I said, you can directly specify for the, for the, the coding system. Um, if you have any questions about this, you can always contact the uh, coil help at bellspar.com. Um, and um, I think I also have a, a slide deck with some images of our floor upon pure product on the next slide. Um, so we're really proud of this product. We think it's a beautiful product. It's high performance, uh, the highest performance product. Um, we're also really proud in the upper left-hand corner um, is a picture of the floor upon pure on a roof of, of a recently completed project. This is um, uh, Jason McClellan's Heron, Hall, Heron House. Um, this is his private residence that he was building to Living Building Challenge. Um, this, if, for those of you who don't know, Jason McClellan is a um, the founder of the Living Building Challenge. So he chose our product on a metal sales roof uh, to, uh, to coat the roof of his product. So we're really proud of that. Um, and with that, I take any, um, my contact information I think is on the next slide. Oh, oh yes, sorry, I missed, missed one slide. Um, so three of the things I learned um, throughout this process is one, um, it's important to be one of the, to be the first to the table. It's, it's, it's advantageous to do so because it helps set the precedent for manufactured applied coatings. Um, we worked directly with um, the Living Future Institute and the HPC together uh, to create a policy for disclosing coating formulations for non-site applied products. And we still hope that that um, both imp um, helps us but also helps other coatings manufacturers to consistently um, report their ingredients and to have a policy for doing that. We also learned that one size does not fit all. Um, we, as I mentioned, have a very diverse portfolio um, and it requires a diverse set of solutions to um, get our customers and their customers the information that they need um, to make those, those decisions. 
Um, we also learned that supply chain partnerships are, are key. We need to have good relationships with our suppliers so that we know um, what's in our own products before we can talk to our, um, our customers and tell them what's their products. We also need to understand our customers' um, needs and goals and talk, and talk with them um, to really understand what they're going for so we give them what they need. Um, and I think the last slide does have my contact information, so I'm always available for, for questions or follow-up, um, and you can reach me there. Thank you, Teresa. Um, that was a really great presentation, and one of the things that is really impressive about Valspar and now Sherwin-Williams was the decision to hire their own on-staff toxicologist which not a lot of other companies have, um, and particularly one as qualified and, and rock starish as, as Teresa. So uh, again, take her up on her offer if you have questions about the work they do there. And of course, uh, keep their products in mind. Now our next presenter, Amanda, I didn't use the picture on the slide that we used in the webinar invite, uh, but Amanda recently was awarded uh, a sustainability leadership award uh, by the state of Wisconsin. And uh, you're gonna see in the story that she tells her own personal journey from being the first sustainability professional at INPRO and the work that she has driven forward there uh, is, is really quite impressive. So Amanda, please take it away. Thank you so much, Terry. Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. Uh, as Terry mentioned, my name is Amanda Getch, and I'm the Sustainability Manager at INPRO. And today what I'll do is just share some information about our evolution here in product transparency documentation. My current responsibilities span across all departments, working with everyone from marketing and sales to product management, manufacturing and operations, and more. Some of my specific initiatives include product sustainability development, uh, corporate approaches to sustainability principle integration, and of course, our triple bottom line key performance indicators, tracking and reporting on those throughout the year both internally and externally. A little uh, personal background, I received my master's degree in sustainable business management and conservation biology from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And during that time, I was also working as program director for a program called the Green Master's Program. And the Green Master's Program although it sounds like an academic program, is really a program for businesses. It's a free points-based benchmarking program for businesses operating in the state of Wisconsin. Although anybody around the world can access the, the survey and can use that as a tool in their own business. Through that program, I found INPRO and noticed just how much they were doing in the realm of sustainability and I really said, I need to get on board there and work with them. So uh, reached out to our CEO and our senior VP of product management and talked about what this role would look like. And now I've been here for about four, four and a half years. Um, and so I could talk more about that um, and all of the things that we've done on the corporate side of our, our business. But if you would like to contact me, you can find me um, via LinkedIn, Twitter, email, or phone. Next slide, please. So I'd like to share a little bit about INPRO itself. Uh, we are a mid-sized product manufacturing firm headquartered in Muskego, Wisconsin, which is about 20 minutes southwest of Milwaukee. We have approximately 600 employees, so we are growing, uh, which includes domestic territory managers and colleagues increasingly found across the entire world. Product transparency is becoming an essential piece of data for our customers and also proves to be a platform to engage suppliers and internal product innovation. Next slide, please. 
Here at Impro, we offer a very diverse range of interior and exterior architectural products, many of which you are likely familiar with or hopefully familiar with. We have seven divisions, including our IPC door and wall protection, clickies cubicle curtains, track and window coverings, signscape architectural signage, endurance shower systems and toilet partitions, our joint master expansion joint systems, and also in Impro interiors, and those are just a few of our product images up on the screen there. Of course, you can find a lot more information and product uh, information on our website. Next slide, please. So diving more into the product uh, transparency and disclosure program, um, there have been a few tiers of drivers for our product transparency commitment over the years. To start out between 2011 and 2012, we began receiving letters from different architectural and design firms who have tremendous influence over the industry. These letters requested various forms of product transparency disclosure, uh, primarily around environmental product declarations and health product declarations, and um, some of you may have actually signed some of these letters. These letters also set out a timeline for product manufacturers to comply with in order to re remain competitive and remain in specifications and design libraries. I was hired in the spring of 2013, and by that autumn, we met that request, which was a, a fantastic experience. Uh, we began our product uh, transparency disclosure program with our IPC door and wall protection division since it's the most popular and contributes most to lead and other building rating systems. We've now seen that product disclosure, uh, product transparency disclosure is evolving to meet other sustainable building standards, including well, lead, living building challenge, BREAM, and more. And I think Teresa did a great job uh, touching on how uh, product transparency disclosure is definitely evolving to meet those different needs. Next slide, please. As I just mentioned, uh, the two product disclosure tools requested most often in those letters were environmental product declarations and health product declarations. The environmental product declarations, or EPDs, communicate environmental impact of a product or service across its entire life cycle. INPRO currently has seven EPDs covering approximately 120 different products in our IPC door and wall protection division and also our bioprism material. Uh, these EPDs cover product families um, including corner guards, door protection, handrails, rigid sheet wall protection, our wall base, wall guards, and our stainless steel handrails, which I will speak a little bit more about later in the presentation. What you see in front of you now is an example of one of our EPDs. This is one EPD for our Corner Guard product family. In 2013, when we began this process, we wanted to offer an EPD for most, if not all, of our IPC door and wall protection products by Green Build of that year. And so we had a very short window of time to work on this. Um, it quickly occurred to us that this approach was not cost effective to create an individual EPD for each product given the similarities between individual products across product families. We worked and partnered with a company called ThinkStep who modeled our initial life cycle assessments and helped us organize our EPDs by product family. So within each EPD, you'll see a few columns and, oops, if you can go back one. Thanks. Um, you'll see uh, it's usually on page three, four, or five of our EPDs. You'll see a few columns and the first one is titled representative product. The products that are listed there were hypothesized to have the largest environmental impact based on things like size, weight, number of components, et cetera. Uh, we ran life cycle assessment models on each one of those products and then used that as a legitimate umbrella for all similar products underneath them. 
in 2013, we created the first six EPDs covering six different product families and encompassing about 100 different products. Uh, the final page here that you see in front of you shows the results of the uh, all of the products that are listed in that representative product column. Uh, that Those results are showing those products life cycle impact. And what's really fun for me as a sustainability professional is that I can start analyzing this data um, either at a very um, holistic uh, level, looking at the EPDs, or dive into a little bit more information in the LCAs. Um, each color in the legend here represents a different stage in the life cycle. And so we can see at this point, the bluish teal color represents environmental impact across different environmental categories from our supply chain. Orange represents impact from manufacturing, and green uh, represents the impact from transportation. Any shaded area beneath the 0% mark represents material from the product that can be reused at the end of the product's life. So for example, in the G2 flush mount corner guard here, uh, there is an aluminum retainer, and so this aluminum can be recycled and or reused after use and pulls down the overall environmental impact of the product. So, even in the EPD, there is a lot of information that either our customers can use or we can use internally. Next slide, please. Uh, creating EPDs requires many partners and resources in order to be effective and efficient. Creating EPDs takes a very large amount of time, whether partnering with a third party to create the life cycle assessments and subsequent EPDs, or learning how to create life cycle assessments in-house. Over the last couple of years, INPRO has worked with ThinkStep, as I previously mentioned. Uh, in 2013, we hired them to conduct our life cycle assessment. And then in 2016, we purchased the Gabby software necessary to create life cycle assessments in-house. So now I have the honor of learning how to model life cycles for various products and create subsequent EPDs to meet all of our customer needs. We've also partnered with UL Environment. Um, UL Environment is the third party who verifies the information that ThinkStep or myself produces through the Gabby software. And these partnerships are really incredibly valuable. Um, and it's also important for all of our stakeholders, including our customers, to understand just the amount of time and financial resources that is required to produce EPDs um, in and of themselves. I mentioned our stainless steel handrail a few moments ago. Uh, we developed a more robust partnership with one of our suppliers in order to satisfy a specific customer request for a stainless steel handrail EPD. And because this product is not manufactured in-house, we needed to engage, educate, and collaborate with that supplier of the stainless steel handrail uh, to supply necessary primary data for the LPA and EPD. Overall, that was a great exercise to go through, and I think it's one that we'll likely have to replicate as our product transparency disclosure library continues to grow. We will need to further engage our suppliers for other uh, types of data, but primarily um, their, their primary data, including electricity, water waste, and so on. Next slide. So the other type of product disclosure tool that we've used up to this point has been the Health Product Declaration, or HPD, and the HPD illustrates potential human health hazards across the entire life cycle of our products. Again, we have up to this point focused on our IPC door and wall protection product division, and we were one of the original manufacturers in the pilot program back in 2011. Since then, we have remained very committed to this assessment tool. Um, participating in some working groups with the HPDC. Um, and in 2013, we created over 60 HPDs for our door and wall protection product division. Next slide. Here's an example of one of our HPDs in version 2.0. And this one happens to be for our G2 BioBlend sheet material. Uh, we recently pulled, yeah, if you've been to our website recently, we pulled all of our, our original HPDs in version 1.0 to 
since uh, they were soon expiring, and we want to make sure that we are offering the most up-to-date information to our stakeholders and customers. Um, since pulling those down, uh, and even before that, I've been working to transition those same products into the latest version of the HPD. And going through this exercise has allowed us to remain competitive for projects utilizing building rating systems such as LEED B4, which I think was a very large driver in getting the word out on product transparency disclosures in general. Next slide. So we've done a lot of work over the last four years, and I'm only touching on a sliver of the, the initiatives that we've been working on, and we're continuously learning more. Some of our key learnings here at Impro over the last last few years include the fact that the market and industry for product assessment, screening, and optimization are changing very rapidly. There are an ever-growing number of tools available to product manufacturers to disclose, assess, screen, and optimize products against. And choosing which tools you use uh, takes a lot of time um, to analyze. It requires various degrees of financial dedication. Um, an awareness, a continuous awareness of market trends, and um, probably one of the most important uh, uh, resources is having the internal capabilities. There are product manufacturers of all sizes. Um, some of them have sustainability experts on staff, others don't. Um, and then it also requires a willingness of suppliers to participate to provide that primary data I alluded to and other information regarding, um, you know, uh, chemical components down to 100 or 1,000 parts per million. The information assessed in EPDs and HPDs can be leveraged and will be leveraged in new product innovation and existing product improvements. Um, and the documents have also served to act as a platform for us to better educate and collaborate with our suppliers. Next slide. So from our perspective, we would encourage our customers and other stakeholders to look for products that do disclose information regarding environmental and human health impacts. If these documents, um, or if these are documents that you have required, or if you are one of those firms who sent out a letter um, indicating that these documents are required for business, we encourage you to follow that up with um, including compliant manufacturers in your specifications. That is truly the signal that I think product manufacturers need in order to affirm that we're moving in the correct direction. And I know that uh, that has been a topic that I've had conversations about with different um, specifying agencies over the last couple of years. Next slide, please. We would also like to emphasize, again, the amount of time and other resources that go into initiatives such as product transparency disclosure. This in involves engaging multiple stakeholders, and for many product manufacturers, the learning curve is still evolving. Uh, the photo you see here, that is our CEO, Phil Ziegler, enthusiastically speaking uh, with a number of our suppliers. We host an annual supplier conference here at Impro. And at this conference, we bring together our key suppliers, and this day just happened to be the NFL Jersey Day, so that's why you'll see um, a few different NFL teams represented there. And we speak about a lot of current trends, including business trends. Um, and for the last four years, I've been fortunate enough to play a role in this conference, uh, speaking about sustainability. And I think we've made tremendous strides in educating and really emphasizing the importance of product transparency disclosure as part of our overall sustainability commitment here at INPRO. Uh, of course, there are many long-term benefits that come from product disclosure to a product manufacturer, including supplier awareness and engagement, product innovation platforms, and at the end of the day, creating a more sustainable future for all stakeholders and more resilient business internally. Next slide, please. So in conclusion, again, I'd like to thank Terry at Sustainable Minds for hosting what we think is a very important topic of conversation. And I 
thank Teresa uh, for all of her information that she shared today. I think it's important to have as many of these collaborative um, discussions as possible in order to move everyone forward uh, toward a common vision. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me and thanks again for your time today. Thank you, Amanda. That was really a terrific presentation. And what I really liked, and I'm just going to jump in and quickly do a, a catalog demo. What I really liked is the emphasis on the amount of commitment required in the organization to do this kind of work and the engagement with suppliers to be able to pull together the information to create the disclosures. It was particularly important that Teresa pointed out uh, that they are a supplier to building product manufacturers uh, and the amount of effort that they're going through to be able to make those building product manufacturers successful and the corollary, Amanda, that in the short period of time that you've been you know, from starting from zero to four years later, you know, you've got your CEO speaking to all your suppliers, getting them together to get everybody on board. And I love the football analogy, you know, building a team, uh, everybody on the same team going in the same direction, which is exactly what's, what's required. I want to quickly, uh, again, go back to, uh, the catalog and do uh, show you what's there because again we're all about helping AECs find all the brands that have products with transparency information as well as helping those manufacturers uh, get their products with transparency information easily accessible. One thing I want to point out is that uh, we are the official product transparency resource for chips. And so if you are a designer of K through 12, the transparency catalog is where you'll find products for your projects uh, and for manufacturers who care about selling products into K through 12 projects. Here's where you're going to want to be able to make your products be found. Uh, just a quick note. Uh, we donate a small portion of the proceeds of the transparency catalog to the National Park Foundation every year. Uh, and really it's about reminding everyone that green building is about uh, a higher set of goals, um, not just building buildings, but building buildings that uh, reduce the impact on the planet and create uh, healthier and better environments in which people can live. So real quickly, you know, here are the current featured brands. Valspar is the newest. When you come to the Valspar brand showroom, you're going to find two material health overviews, both for the uh, coil and the extrusion. Um, oh, we already looked at that one. Uh, both have HPDs and declare labels. Both have explanations about what they mean, how the products are made, what they're doing to improve. And you can contact Valspar and any of the manufacturers directly through these transparency uh, tools, these transparency products right here. Uh, Inpro, uh, as I showed you in the slide, uh, you can browse their products by CSI master format. You can look by individual division. You can look at them all at once and see, look at the, you know, the amount of work Amanda and everyone involved has put into creating all of these uh, EPDs. And if you click here, any, any of these, you can click and get right to uh, the product information uh, on the Impro website. And if you click here, uh, you get the uh, EPD you know, right here. So we're helping you find all the products and all the disclosures all, all in one place. 
Now, as Amanda said, they're working on, she's working on updating all of their HPDs to 2.0. And when they're ready, those will be added here uh, to the listing. And it will look like, I'll show you one that has. This has, Forbo is a great example. Again, lots of products. that You can go right to the product page in the website, right to the EPD. And we've got the kind of salient attributes, and particularly in the material ingredient side, of what are the results. And because we're an educational marketing platform, we've got education built in everywhere. Uh, so uh, right here uh, in the interface, the user can roll over the tool tip and get all of the, uh, actually decode the scope and, and ratings and what's in the listing. So that pretty quickly, people will be able to scan up and down uh, and see which, uh, which disclosures and, you know, again, any type of disclosure that was used, what do they mean? What were the results, you know, in a glance, uh, making sure that all of these are uh, current that's able to be found in a glance. And there's always contact information. Again, you can go back and through any of the listings, contact the manufacturer. The other thing is you can email the manufacturer. You can, if you like these products, you've got a whole built-in social media campaign uh, to promote these manufacturers and their products. And finally, uh, this is going to be a very handy tool for everyone. Uh, and this is really the master decoder page is not only understanding uh, the information, the listings, but how to use each of these disclosure types uh, in each of the green building rating systems. So this page describes what each of these green building, uh, what each of these disclosures are, uh, what variations they come in, and what scope and results will earn uh, eligibility in the different uh, green building rating systems, of which there are five. And you know, right here, all of these tool tips that we've built into the interface are, are all available here. This is a great resource for training uh, at Lunch and Learns for architectural design reps in an AEC firm, and even uh, just for anyone who wants to better understand uh, you know, what's happening in the green building rating systems. What are these disclosures? This is always free. Uh, it will always be up to date. And if you want to be kept on our mailing list, we invite you to subscribe. I want to wrap up and thanks again, Teresa and Amanda for sharing their stories today and for all of you spending your time with us to learn more about uh, Impro, Sherwin-Williams, and the Sustainable Minds Transparency Catalog. I invite you to take the poll as you leave, and if you'd like the deck sent to you, let us know, and watch for our next webinar next month for the fifth in our series of Transparency is the New Green. So have a great day, and thanks again. <laughs>